Socially radical. Socially radical. Socially radical. Socially radical. Socially radical. Socially radical. Guitar. Welcome to another episode of Socially Radical Guitarist. Um, the song you heard just now was a Phoenix Lawrence uh, Take It Slow. Um, it's a 2019 single. Um, and she's really trying to push, you know, to get her career to launch. So show that support. Give those listens. 26 monthly listens, I think. Unacceptable on Spotify. For a song like that. Um, 
now going into the disclaimer, um, uh, anything that's said uh, on the show by the host or any of the guests that the host brings on or the respective opinions of the host and the guests, they have nothing to do with Radio Waterloo, any of its subsidiaries or any of its affiliates. So, no, try as you might, you cannot sue public radio over this program. And yes, the respective opinions are the of the host and the guest are the hosts and the guests alone. They have nothing to do with the African and Caribbean Inclusion Center, which is incidentally sponsoring this show. So don't sue the nonprofit either. Support the nonprofit. Um, especially support uh, its major initiative for full inclusion, full integration, and full equality for Africans and Caribbeans in particular and refugees in general. Um, People that come here to this country should be included and should, from a tangible standpoint, be equal. And that is the mission of the organization, so please support now, um, uh, getting into the his song and why I decided to play it, um, I just heard her live um, on Wednesday. Um, and um, live along with three other artists that I'm going to put up today. So during the intermission, you're actually going to hear two songs. So, it's a, you know, this is going to be a very interesting episode. It's a... It's, um, kind of a tribute to that concert that I saw, Lemon Stage, at the Elmo Combo in Toronto. Very, very good. Very good musicians. Very sh- good showcase. And um, pretty soon, whenever I can, in a week, two, two weeks, I'm also going to be showcasing some of the musicians that were invited there, not just um, the ones that performed live. Um Phoenix, uh, she did very well, um, especially considering the fact that um, she didn't have a band with her, just um, the backing electronic music. But uh, her singing uh, was so good that she was able to carry the day. And when she played on the piano, she really made you think of Alicia Keys. Um and you know just getting into you know the basic theme of the song it's and that's basically what the guitar is doing um you'll hear it at an octave higher But yeah, generally that's what's going on. Um, um, there's a little bit of uh, a small variation in the pre-chorus. But yeah, generally the guitar's role is very minimal um, and very significant at the same time. It's kind of an ironic situation where um that guitar is setting the whole backing theme of the music but at the same time it is not doing much and it's not getting in the way of uh phoenix lauren's lyrics um that's a a good conventional technique um brought through the ages you know originally from funk bands and um as music evolved as it carried through that ended up being the main uh, method and instrument. And and the beat is, uh, it's a very nice beat. It's a very good African beat um, to, you know, get people dancing, get people thinking. Um, it kind of baffles me to see that sort of a situation. Um, when you're an independent label um, 
and when you've signed yourself, basically, this is what Phoenix Lauren did. It's Phoenix Records. It's her song. It's her music. Um, it ends up being a hit and miss, even if you're following the trends. Um, it seems quite honestly like she's following the trends. Um, it's, it's normal to sing about love. There's nothing controversial about that. There's been songs about love since music has been invented. And in fact, a very plausible revolutionary theory, uh, I mean, evolutionary theory, scientific, you know, anthropological theory about the origins of music is that it was originally a courtship ritual. But um, because of man's ability to be creative and to think creatively because of the enlarged and enhanced brain that a music ended up being able to be used for other purposes, but primarily it's about courtship. It's about love. That's the primacy of music. That the original part of what music is about. Um, and, uh, not not controversial um very good very talented um very good backing tracks very easy to dance to and yet for some reason 26 monthly listens she performed maybe about you know four songs um that's the only one i could see up on spotify um and, and it just makes you wonder what's going on, you know. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, anyways, listening to her play on Wednesday uh, definitely uh, put me in a very good mood. And in fact, this week was excellent. Um, a lot of great things happened this week. Um, I got to listen to Phoenix Lauren live, got to listen to the Command Sisters live. I got to listen to a very, very good band coming up, Sumo Psycho, which Sky Sweetenham is heading. I got to see her live, and I actually got to take a picture with Sky. It was great. Um, and um, uh, I got to see the Whale and the Wolf live, and the bass player gave me his pick as a memento. So it was awesome. A lot of great things happened. Um, a lot of great things happened politically this week, too. Um, F.W. De Klerk, um, the last apartheid president of South Africa, has died. Um, now, a lot of communists are pretty picky. They're, you know, upset that he, he didn't die in a jail cell after being convicted for... Um, you know, for the crimes he committed as an apartheid president. But I think he, that, that's just nitpicking. It's being picky. He's dead. That's good enough. I think that's... You can't have it your way completely. Like, yeah, it would have been excellent to see him die and rot in a jail cell. But we got the next best thing. And a lot of, uh, um, you know, especially the youth version of the ANC, which is the Economic Freedom Fighters, um, they're going to fight like hell to make sure he doesn't get a state funeral. So I think as long as communists keep pushing and keep being militant, you're going to get a very, like, it's already satisfying to have seen him die. And that's excellent, in my view. Um, another great thing that happened this week was uh, we managed to cancel Lauren Southern, the uh, agent of the state, trying to whitewash um genocide at the residential schools using this incredibly terrible, terribly made uh, documentary. Um, it was painful to sit through that. 
But canceling her was uh, incredibly satisfactory. It shows the power of the party, actually. Because um, it only really took one email. One email. That That's all it really took. Within 15 minutes, she was canceled. Um, and that shows her power. That shows her reach. It's a party that's not to be underestimated. But yeah, we were able to get it done. So... You know, I'll get into a little bit what's going, uh, what went on with, uh, you know, um, it, it's it's actually a common theme. You know, white people are trying to whitewash uh, the crime of genocide, colonialism, and uh, theft, essentially, organized theft by their their governments, and. Um, I'll I'll get into that uh, about why these two things intersected and why we as communists ended up having a, a very good week and and why I had a very good week personally uh, with uh, the performances of Sumo Psycho and uh, the Command Sisters, Phoenix Lauren especially, and uh, the Will and the Wolf. Not a single bad performance. Um, they played very well live. Um, they're definitely bands that should be taken seriously as they're coming up. And I really hope that people that self-release really get the, the love and the do that they deserve when they put a lot of sophistication and creativity into their music. When... Um, when Sumo's Psycho, for example, if you listen to the lyrics of the song that's about to come up, um, you know, very inspirational lyrics. People make a mistake with uh, bands like this. Um, they, I mean, they, they take the look and take the aggressive, you know, dancing. But they don't really listen to what the artist has to say. Now that, that can be a terrible mistake because you miss the sophistication and the beauty. And uh, I hope uh, she gets appreciated more for the sophistication of how um, Sky writes and how the Sumo Psycho writes. And how they work together as a band. And how talented they really are. Um, the song that I want to promote. Run with the Giants. They did it live. And um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. That they'd be able to transition like that. From metal to reggae like that. And then back to metal again. It felt a little bit like I was listening to 12 Foot Ninja. Um, yeah, very, very good, very refined music. And, and turns out they have a lot of experience. I, I, I asked, uh, um, Oscar, um, personally about, you know, their experience and their background, what they learned largely self-taught, but years and years of experience putting into their music and polishing their craft. And that's the result. That's the product, um, of listening to different music from around the world and playing it, rehearsing, working together as a band. Very good. Um, the drummer, excellent drummer. Um, I didn't recognize him. He was right in front of me because he was uh, dressed. He had his shirt off when he was playing. Um, very, very good. Um, and... That was their first time playing together live. The new drummer, Joey. So it was very, very good. Um, like the whale and the wolf, just tight, tight, tight. Unbelievably tight. Ca uh, ca the Command Sisters, 
um, able to steal and carry a show just with two acoustic guitars. Unbelievable. It was really unbelievable to see just using two acoustic guitars and still being able to carry the show like that, get people engaged, get people excited. Um, that kind of stage presence is something uh, I've never seen before. And it was, it was very good. Very good. I mean, I've seen it before, but not up close. Like I, I was maybe about th three feet away from them. I was right in front. That's how I was able to, to take the camera. If you look at the Instagram for Social Radical Guitars, you can see all the pictures I was able to take. And um, I'll put up the videos. Like there are small clips of the songs, not the full songs. Small clips of of what was going on with the Lemon Stage. Very, very beautiful stuff. Um, and yeah, Phoenix, uh, able to do a lot just with her voice and the, the backing track. Yeah, the, the, the uh, not a single bad performance from any of the musicians that were there. Um, I, I, I appreciated the guitarist from the whale and the wolf giving giving a salute to the prince with what he was wearing um and uh meeting some good up and coming musicians Theon Gibbs uh and meeting the Vanniers uh instantly they're going to be playing later this evening um I wasn't able to make it. Um, it's just the whole uh, public transport system is messed up if I go, but I, w I won't be able to get back until the next morning. So I, I just wasn't able to do that. And uh, I'm doing school at the same time. And I have a, but um, You'll definitely hear from them in later episodes. Uh, the Vanniers, you're going to be hearing from Tion Gibbs. Um, you're going to be hearing a lot of up and coming talent. I hope this isn't uh, the last time I get invited to a major event. Um, but, you know, the way I talk, this is going to be a communist show. That's the shtick. It's going to be communist. There's no way around that. And obviously that's infuriating um, to especially the command sisters um, uh, record label, um, Universal Music. Um, I feel like they could have, you know, been carried a lot better than they are right now. Um, you know, 59,000 monthly views. I feel like they should be getting a lot more and, um, you know, maybe more music. Like, they should have more support. It's a major record label, you know, just thinking about it. But I, I say what I say about um, mainstream music, uh, bourgeois control of the propagation of culture. I'm going to say it as many times as it needs to be said until the revolution happens. I mean, I put a note on the um, Instagram and I hope it doesn't get anybody, <laughs> any one of the musicians in trouble. But... The revolution is going to happen. There are communists everywhere. There's one in every single worker in this country. And the, and it'll come out. And the revolution is going to happen whether you like it or not. That is the truth. And yeah, that's uh, basically what I have to say about that. 
excellent um, show of power, us being able to cancel the fascist Lauren Southern. Um, excellent death. It's great to see uh, F.W. DeClerc die. I mean, that's that's quite a treat. For, on top of an excellent week, great to see live performances from all of them. And uh, the song coming up next is going to be um, from the Command Sisters. They were very proud about this song because they got on the WWE. So I'm going to give them this one. It's Feel Good. Um, feel Good. And it's uh, from the album Rouge. From the album Rouge. And then the song after that is going to be uh, from Sumo Psycho from the album Initiation. And it'll be um, Run With The Giants. So... Stay tuned for the two songs, and then we'll be right back. So many things I want. So many things I need. And now my only wish is, give it all to me. New and shiny, I want it now. I got a feeling that I can't control. I can't wait any longer now, because I feel like I'm on the road. I can't hide it anymore In the end I'm guessing what I came here for Give me something that'll make me feel good Give me something that'll make me feel good Good, good Oh, I love it and I know that I would Give me something that'll make
the courage to hold your own against the tide. The wind is blowing, bar the doors that wants to get inside. It may seem hopeless, it may seem like it's the end. In order to be broken, first it has to bend. Be the resistance, be the obstacle that strikes some fear. Listen closely in the distance, what is it you hear? Footsteps are low because the path was cleared. Just keep moving forward, hold your own and persevere. Down a wave of defiance. Socially Radical Guitars. Two songs you heard during the intermission were uh, Feel Good from the Command Sisters and their album Rouge and um, Run With The Giants from Sumo Psycho and the album The Initiation. Very, very good musicians live, very tight stuff, and there's a lot more sophistication in it than you think. Definitely mute musicians to appreciate and I hope that they get that traction in the future now um, I mean let's get through um, the astounding power of the party the astounding power of the party to now in essence um, Alex Reed um, um, a comrade had initiated, an indigenous comrade had initiated um, the drive to um, expel Lauren Southern from having some sort of a platform. Um, the The message got sent through our, you know, communication channels of the party um, went to Mossy and then ultimately came to um, to me. Um, I believe, um, it was probably a joint effort. It seems like maybe there were a lot of emails coming at once. Um, but I had written my email, uh, it's posted out there in my Facebook and, uh, um, on my story somewhere. Um, basically the sum of it was, um, both you know, like the settler colonialists, essentially, this is what the political program is for settler colonialism. Um, ultimately, what uh, Lauren Southern was really railing against with her, um, the Canadian mass grave host hoax um, nonsense documentary was about defending the reputation of the Catholic Church 
And apparently, this was supposed to be um, a conspiracy timed during the election in order to help Justin Trudeau. Now, here, here there are a few problems with that. First, um, the target was the Catholic Church, and Dustin Trudeau is a devout Catholic. Um, he had said so in, at about 2011 that he returned to Catholicism, and he became a very devout towards Catholicism. Second problem is uh, these mass graves, if you look at around the time that um, they were killed off. It would have been when his father was in charge. So, the the legacy in the dark cloud is actually hanging over his family's head. And he's Catholic. So, in what way does this conspiracy benefit the liberals? Um, the second problem is apparently, um, there's nothing untoward or strange about having a school next to a graveyard. You have a school next to a graveyard and, and that's, that's supposed to be normal. That's supposed to be okay. Um, add to that that a large part of you know her defense of the church was that they didn't have records. In other words, they weren't documenting all of their crimes. Um, uh, the Canadian government, incidentally, around the early 1900s, claimed that there were only a hundred thousand Indigenous people here. So. The, the idea or maybe the suggestion that um, the Catholic Church wasn't covering up their information, um, that because they built a residential school afterwards nearby a graveyard, or that um, um, there are two different sets of Catholicism that... Like it wasn't all organized or conspiracy. I mean, that's complete nonsense. I mean, Pierre Trudeau admitted to himself that as long as most of you are speaking English, I did what I had to do. That, that was the goal. The goal was to eradicate culture. And how do you eradicate culture, you... Make an example from a very young age that they see the fear and they see what happens when they speak their own language. And that's what they were doing um, the entire time. Uh, you know, th this whole wash wh whitewashing about what had gone on. Um, because she couldn't find a record of a guy bulldozing graves. Or because, I mean, another thing, just just trying to d discredit science. Um, I mean, this is kind of the thing where they go after this GRP. The... the the technology that they used uh, to find the mass graves. Like, I mean, you, yeah, that, I mean, that has to be pretty, you know, as, as astonishing. It's, the ground penetration ro radar is precise enough for people that know how to use the tools for 
the military use it in order to detect mines and in order to detect tunnels. It is also um, efficient enough and precise enough, um, depending on the conditions, whether ideal or even, you know, slightly less than ideal, for people to be able to find precise artifacts and know how to dig them up without damaging them. And yet the, the supposition um, based on one um, miscited, um, carefully manipulated quote from, a, from an article that that GPR, excuse me. Um, so ground penetration radar um, is not precise or efficient enough to find the graves. And you'll, you'll say that in, in one vein and yet on the other end, you'll say, oh, like we knew this was a graveyard. Um, yeah, p people might have known it was a graveyard. But that doesn't mean that there's no cover-up. Just because it's normal to have, you know, people hidden underground there. I mean, it's 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 like it's not going to be normal to have kids by the hundreds in a graveyard. But, like, it's hidden in plain sight, but it doesn't mean that there's no cover-up. It just means that maybe people aren't going to look there because it's a graveyard. Maybe that's why they dug it there. Uh, the problem was it's a, it's a lot of just suppositions. The, the, the video itself doesn't... At the end, she finds herself unable to dispute the official facts that they tried to eradicate the language, that they brutalized the kids while they're in there, and um, that really a lot of these these crimes should still be prosecuted even today. There are still people that are alive uh, that were involved in the sexual and physical abuse of these children. But, yeah, they they haven't been uncovered. Um, and, of course, the records are spotty because they were covering it up. It doesn't necessarily mean that the records can be reliable or not reliable. And um, this this thing about trying to protect the Catholic Church, and really there was a dog whistle in the video if you weren't paying attention. She was saying, um, the indigenous people are going to get hurt because it'll look like they're not credible. That they're lying. That, like, she didn't say they're lying. She said that the media had exaggerated what they were saying even though at the beginning she was trying to make it seem like um the the local band was covering it up the the, the actual truth i mean this was the kind of nonsense that was going on um and that was why uh, we as a party, we organized to have her canceled, and we did so. University of British Columbia, within about 15 minutes from the time I at least wrote my email. I believe maybe there were many others, but um, incidentally, I had wrote clear and concrete demands for um, reparations in the form of partial tuition. So, contrary to what uh, the students for free expression were alleging, um, 
at least on my end, I didn't make any um, threats for violence against a British Columbia school. I'm all the way out here in Ontario. Um, I, I can't make the trip. So, so, so after that, uh, the funny thing was I wrote it to the president, the one answer that answered and let us know that, um, Sarah it was canceled was uh, the VP of the finance operations. It was very funny to to see the banner for who it had replied. It was it was funny and a very good element of class uh, class society, class struggle, and uh, the the state of the economic and financial incentives of how our society operate. It's very interesting to see, but that, that was a very good hallmark moment. Um, and yeah, it made me think of, um, the, the very good news of, uh, FW de Klerk dying. That was, uh, excellent. To have all of that come together, to, to uh, that and the performances I saw, making this an excellent week for the 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 show, an excellent week for class struggle in Canada, and uh, an, an excellent week in general for you know just seeing a reactionary die. That's that's beautiful. It's it's a very good thing. For um, you know, for for everyone, I think of for many revolutionaries, this is a very good week. It capped off very well. Um, I definitely appreciated it. Seeing um, the growing influence and the growing power of the party, we can cancel anybody on a camp. And we just did it. 15 minutes from the time I wrote an email, it was done. Done. Cancelled. That is excellent. Um, so, no need to get pessimistic, everyone. The man... The underlying root of the problems with our parties that we don't have reach in every school and in every campus like many of the other parties do. But if we did, we'd be a more viable option for the working class. And as far as electoral policies are concerned, we'd definitely be doing a lot better. And as far as um, general political situation, um, we'd have a viable alternative. Our party would be stronger. And uh, the, the, the personnel and the resources we have to be able to fight reaction would be a lot better. But, but... But our influence is growing. It's we're we're growing. We're getting applications countrywide. Things are happening. The revolution is coming. So for any comrades watching the show getting pessimistic, there is no need to be. We'll have excellent weeks just like this where a reactionary a colonial reactionary like an apartheid president dies where uh, a fascist Catholic white lady gets canceled uh, from a, a higher education institution that gets preserved. Education becomes decolonized in that way. And where the radical voices 
begin to be accepted in the mainstream. And we're able to showcase ourselves, promote ourselves, and um, give that embedded thinking and legitimacy in a society that was conventionally anti-capitalist before. So the revolution is coming. It's coming. That energy is there. And it's a great time for it to come because um, it's, it's coming a lot faster and a lot sharper in other countries. The communist parties are definitely getting through to the masses quite rapidly. And if you don't see it coming and we are not prepared and we, we don't have an answer to the backlash, it, it's going to be bad. But we're getting it. We're getting it there. We're making things happen. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So the last song we're going to end off with is actually um, the last band, the, the headliner for the show, The Lemon Stage, um, that happened at the Elmo Combo in Toronto. So that's that's where I, um, I went to that concert on a Wednesday night. It was at the Elmo Combo. It's Lemon Stage highlighting up-and-coming musicians. And it's uh, The Whale and the Wolf and their single Veins. Um, very good music. Um and yes, once again, I really liked uh, that tribute to Prince wearing that shirt. And um, I really appreciated how tight everybody was and how good everybody is with their instrument. Um, you don't usually get that talented of an indie band in combination like that, but they definitely have it. So... Um, appreciate that um the uh whale and the wolf veins it's a single coming out uh in favor of the upcoming album uh i haven't seen the announcement yet but look forward to that song um after the outro and uh, we'll see you next week <laughs> Misty 
Twice shy, she told me 